Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. <coughs> ve salatu ve selamu ala Seyyidina ve Mevlana Muhammedin ve alihi ve sahbihi ve zuvacihi ve zurriyeti ecmain. Allah'ım Rabbena arenal hakka hakka ve ardıkna teba ve arenal batıla batıla ve ardıkna istinaba. Allah'ım arena aşır hakka ikla şia ikamahiyya. Allah'ım Rabbena zidna ilma ve amelan ve ikhlasın. يا رب العالمين اللهم صل على يا كفي غزة وفي كل مكان اللهم نفس كربنا وقربهم وسبيت أقدامنا وأقدامه والطفنا وبهم يا رحم الرحمين وسل وسلم على سيدنا مولا محمد وعلي وصحبه وزواجه وزوريته أجمعين. So I've been asked to answer this question. Um, the question is about um, خليفة in Islam. And by Khalifa we mean the supreme leader. <laughs> of the Ummah as a whole. So the leader, the president or the leader of countries, separate countries are not Khalifas. And the question is about uh, the question is about the process, the process used to elect Khalif, the process used to elect Khalif. And uh, how do the masses essentially elect their Khalifa in Islam? In the West we have every individual voting for the president. If president gets majority votes, he wins. Okay. And the question is, is it certain group of people Normally they are known as Alul Hal Wal Aqd who elect the Khalifa or the whole masses. Okay. Okay, so <coughs> we need um, some before we answer the question. <coughs> I need to preface it by a few important um, principles, I guess. Um, the first thing is, I mean, I <coughs> personally don't engage in asking or answering these sort of questions, and the reason is they are abstract questions. They don't have any relevance to our reality. Why? Because we don't have a Khalifa and we are not Anytime soon, we are not going to be faced with the question of how to elect or select a Khalifa. So, it's an abstract question. In a sense, a historical question. What we have is a struggle to establish Islamic governments and we have two Islamic states 
So for those states, it's a relevant question how to elect their leaders. But those leaders are not Khalifas. They are leaders of those countries. And both of those countries belong to different schools of uh, Islamic Jura, uh, ju, uh, ju, what do you call it? Islamic fiqh or jurisprudence, which is not a good translation. So that's why we should use fiqh. And uh, we'll come to that. So, and why uh, abstract question? And this is one of the weakness of uh, contemporary Islamic thinking is, it's very abstract. When you ask questions which has no relevance to your reality, what you are going to do is create ideal types, models. And not only those models won't have any relation to the historical reality of today, but the historical tradition either. Because we link to tradition through through action, through struggle. So what happens is those models uh, are inevitably uh, impressed by, penetrated by modern epistemologies and modern uh, dominant political theories and philosophies. So get back, getting back to that um, when you talk about Islamic um, Al Hukm Sharai about anything, a Sharai judgment, judgment based on Islamic fiqh or judgment within Islamic fiqh. As Imam Shatbi has said, there are two, every judgment has two aspects. situation and the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about that situation. So there are various points at which you can make a mistake in this judgment because obviously every judgment is also judgment implies freedom. And in Islamic fiqh, you, judgment is based on knowledge. Um, <clears throat> so you can make a mistake about understanding the situation. So your, your understanding of the situation might be wrong. So you have to get the uh, understanding of the situation correct. And command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in general, you, you need to be correct about that. But um, that command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be about this situation. So you can make uh, a judgment in actual command, understanding the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, understanding the situation. <coughs> But you might be understanding command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correctly, but it might not apply to this situation. So the, this is mistake in application. Um, but if you understand the situation incorrectly, even when you understand the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command correctly, you might make a mistake because you don't understand the situation correctly. So the command is correct, but command is not about this situation. 
So a, a misunderstanding situation can also lead to misunderstanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. That's why that's why Islamic fiqh is closely related to actual situation. That's why Imam Malik uh, didn't used to answer questions about uh, speculative situation, situation which hadn't yet exist. And he used to say, uh, if that situation happens, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, create um, people who would be able to make judgment about those in that situation so that's why if you want to make a judgment about khilafa so abstract from command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abstract from any situation and situation to which you want to apply so if you don't understand the situation even though if in abstract you understand the process correctly, you would make mistakes. So that's why, <clears throat> except for if you are studying, uh, you know, avabul fiqh, that's why faqih actually has, faqih should be closely connected to the struggle. You know, how can somebody uh, be a faqih if he is not a mujahid or if, how can someone be a faqih if he is not a faqir, as Imam Khomeini said? <coughs> and that's the whole concept of walaat al faqih Not, not uh, specifically to share uh, conception, but generally walaat al faqih means that faqih is the guardian of ummah. Because faqih uh, gives opinion about understand the situation and then gives opinion about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command is in that specific situation. So, so within general rules and guidelines which are not context dependent, how we will uh, select or elect a Khalifa will change according to historical situation. And it is part of the situation that, you know, it, there are many things which are part of the situation, but the part of situation is your own uh, <clears throat> lack of power, lack of ability, lack of Uh, social uh, dominance of Islam, etc. That also is a factor in determining what the command would be, for example. So if you look at two Islamic states which we have today, they're all, um, <clears throat> the situation is such that many things which are desirable cannot be applied to them. So, for example, Iran. Iran in Iran, struggle and revolution came with uh, Islamic forces <coughs> joining hands, not actively, but um, hands with you know Marxist and secular forces in Iran, which were working against Shah. And although Islamic Forces came on the top because of the personality of Imam Khomeini. Rahmatullah But there were compromises in the sense that Islamic forces were never able to totally single-handedly dominate the situation. So that's why they have to always compromise with the non-Islamic forces in Iran. Um, 
from. So there are. So that's why they are bound to use form of democracy, nationalism, to promote Islamic values as far as possible. <coughs> and the second thing, thing is because imperialism is there because Iran is a nation state and bound to be a nation state. You can't change that for now anyway, as long as imperialism is there. It's a nation state encircled by Darul Harb, which is constantly through sanctions, through providing uh, material aid to anti-Iran elements outside the country and inside the country is trying to sabotage and ultimately destroy Iranian revolution. So it's a, it's a, it's an exceptional state uh, encircled by encircled by um, Darul Haq. So so these are uh, situational situational uh, shortcomings or situational disadvantages we make it, it's impossible that you can you can apply all the ideal commands for this situation similarly in afghanistan uh, things are different because because of jihad because of a victory of a military victory which was single-handed they were able to establish uh, uh, a rule in which the, 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 they have more discretion but there are obviously a lot of situational limitations it's a nation state, it's a nation state encircled by Darul Harb, like Iran. And it has uh, huge uh, Pashtun and Persian divide as well. Uh, so they have to overcome all those things. Um, so that's why it is, although it doesn't use democracy, etc. Still, it's not a universal Islamic state. It can't be until a lot of Islamic states uh, become Islam. A lot of Muslim nations become Islamic state, and we are able to challenge uh, capitalism and imperialism on a wider, wider scale. Okay, so in this context, if we talk about Khalifa selection i think we can say a few general guidelines which are there i think first important thing is the person and his qualities at least there are 10 qualities the person should have in order to be a khalifa and one of them is for example he sh he should be a mujtahid fi deenillah So, ilm is a very important quality. And even like, uh, until the end, all Abbasi Khulafa, most of the Abbasi Khulafa, for example, were Mujtahideen. Uh, that wasn't the case with the uh, Uthmani Khulafa. That's why, that was a stretch to call it Khulafa in the first place. Um, so, th the quality of the person is important. Um, and second thing is uh, Islamic society, Islamic state presupposes the Islamic society or if you have a revolution uh, then the state creates Islamic society or tries to create Islamic society and one of the characteristics of uh, Islamic society the hierarchy or the better word is gradation and this gradation is voluntary 
Islamic society the society in which people of knowledge and piety are spontaneously naturally regarded as the leaders so the the leader of masajid the leaders of different uh, social groupings depending on what type of social groupings you have and i think the through this social gradation uh, naturally leaders emerge so in madina society people knew, knew who were the leaders of uh, muhajirin and that was based on their knowledge and their piety and their sacrifices in islam now these leaders are not voted but they have mass uh, base so they come out of like they have uh, recognition in in society so if there are election they will actually win those election because they are the natural leaders of the society uh, a society cannot be an islamic society if it cannot recognize people like abu bakr or ali or umar or hosefa as their leaders or muaz ibn jabr and then these people among them based on the quality qualities those 10 qualities elect khalifa now how this election will occur whether there would be actual voting or what methods would be used they are determined by situation and historical phases of islamic society and based on the based on that fuqaha would you know uh, implement the rules etc so apart from these general gu- gu- guidelines uh, in muslim history you know um, khulafa has been elected and selected by different means and and election as a technique can be used uh, in the future as the iranian use it if you if you look at the supreme leader the imam khomeini was the natural leader of the revolution so but he also through referendum he asked the nation to rectify his leadership and the constitution so that could be one method um and after that uh, iranian parliament and uh, the cleric uh, not cleric it's called majlis expert expert uh, council which is also elected i don't know whether it's directly elected or the elected by the parliament so majlis e khabargan or uh, ex- experts which include fuqaha among other experts that actually elects the supreme leader so that system can be for example generalized to an elector khalifa so what so how does the masses essentially elect the khalifa in islam the answer to this is <coughs> in islamic society you have social leaders and this social leadership can be you know rectified through election if you wish and those leader eventually elect or select the khalifa based on those 10 qualities um and it can take various uh, forms depending on the historical situation so that's um my short answer or no answer um so how does matter send your club we have very individual voting for the president and the get majority the win so we would have to 
we can use the mass uh, voting system but as i said <coughs> we would have to uh, rectify or restrict or put conditions on the process uh, in various ways to make sure that um, Khalifa, the person who is elected as Khalifa has the requisite, uh, the required uh, preconditions, it fulfills the requ requisites for the Khilafa. So, so they are not uh, and I, I, I just gave the example of, of Iran's uh, system at the moment as, as a possible possible modifications of the election system in order to el elect a Khalifa. But this is just one um, version of it. Um, who uh, exactly votes for Khalifa in Islamic State? So uh, basically, uh, people with certain Ahlul Hal Wal Aqd they do, but um, they themselves emerge out of Islamic society through. Uh, natural leadership so they can their leadership can be rectified so in that sense masses would at least indirectly <coughs> would be part of the election or can be a part so it can be election it can be selection it can be a, a limited election it can be a mass election but would have to be conditioned by those general guidelines, I would say. Um, he said, um, so I think, I think, um, so that's all I have to say. But one important thing is um, in this regard is it's very important to understand what democracy is and what it is not. So election is a technique used in democracy, but election is not democracy. And democracy we have is a constitutional democracy. So when I was talking about the <coughs> understanding of situation, uh, it requires uh, a deep understanding of democracy as well. And one last thing, one important thing about um, Islamic system and what it differentiates it from democracy is not uh, whether Khalifa is elected, elected or not, but in Islamic system there won't be any parliament <coughs> because legislation is not a Legislation is done by fuqaha, not by parliament. So eventually, we won't have any parliament. Parliament is a purely uh, liberal and democratic institution. It's, it's not necessarily a democratic institution uh, in modern sense of the word because it pre-date democracy, but it is. Um, something related to demos. The only thing is who is demos and their ambit has increased over time. So to just reiterate, um, there's no specific way, um, method of uh, electing or selecting Khilafah. It can it varies with situation, the context, but we can use election and it can be, uh, masses can be part of it or directly or indirectly. And I've just given an example how they could be. 
Okay, so we'll just stop here, inshallah. Subhanakallah, we'll be able to finish the light. I love that stuff. I'm going to do it. Wassalamu alaikum. Wassalamu alaikum.